I got friends only wanna talk business. I got expensive, cause when is expensive. I got expensive, cause when is expensive. I've been reading out of work. And I've been shutting down the stars. And welcome back to Put That Coffee Down, the Freight Sales show for for closers here in Freight Sales. Take number two on the opening. Uh, We had a little sound issues, uh, but I think it is recovered now. Um, Thanks for joining us today on Freight Waves TV. As I was saying, we uh, we have a very special show today, talking about note takings, talking about the importance of being organized when it comes to, to freight sales as you build up that pipeline Things get a little chaotic. It's tough to remember everyone and what uh, stage in the cells they're in or if you talk to them or not. So we're going to talk to Josh Lyles. He's the, the founder over at Sales Dash, a CRM for freight uh, logistics. And uh, we're going to talk about the importance of keeping everything on track and uh, a lot of that. Josh, welcome to the show. Kevin, how's it going? Pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here, Josh. Um, let's uh, first talk about a little bit about your background and how you uh, how you got to sales that that kind of that aha moment when uh, you decided to drop everything and pursue something that uh, you know uh, that that everyone is unsure about. It's very risky whenever you drop everything and you go out on your own. No, it really is. And CRM software is one of the most random things that you can go and say, yeah, I want to go, I want to go build one of these systems Uh, because a lot of people don't like them in general. But um, I'm originally from Atlanta. I moved up to, I currently live in Nashville right now. Uh, I I moved up here when I was working for Tesla, which is kind of what propelled my sales career and then got into sales management with them. CRM was a really big factor for me in having success at at a pretty early age. Uh, not only in sales, but getting into management pretty quick. And then somehow, some way, stumbled my way into freight brokerage uh, for a pretty unique opportunity at one point, Logistics, who was owned by Keep Trucking or Motive at that time. Um, and then eventually shifted over to uh, Silo, where I was their head of operations and head of sales. And they're, they're here in Nashville operating, doing really well. Um, but the reason why I, I've always been wanted to just go the entrepreneur route and start my own thing. And sort of after my you know initial experience in brokerage, CRM was one of those things that I just felt was one more of my uh, more of a strength for myself, um, and something that a lot of people struggled with because a lot of times they don't like them because of the complexity and just all the little nuances that go into a data entry and that kind of stuff. So um, it was you know getting to a point where hey, if this could be simplified, where salespeople can understand it better, but managers can also coach their teams more effectively. Cause I just did a lot of outside education when I was at Tesla and that I thought helped me when I transitioned over to the brokerage world, uh, have some success early on. I think one of the, the, the things in, in freight that you don't see in, in all industries is, when you're talking about CRM is the ability for other, other team members to, to be able to, to view and understand what is going on, on the fly. Right. Uh, because you might be out of the office, you might be uh, working on some other, uh, customer or some other fire. Uh, it is logistics, of course. So I, I think in a lot of other industries, it's it's really for you and your sales manager and not not too many other people have to be involved in in that system. But in freight, I think everyone has to ha- use a, the, the same system, not as in a, a CRM. Of course, you're going to use the same CRM, but the same mm-hmm. steps, the same kind of uh, philosophy or methodology, or everyone else is going to get confused as, as they, they go in and look. Yeah. So that's one of the cool parts about CRM is that you can cook your sales process if you have one that's a little bit more in depth and not the, hey, this step, this leads cold, warm, or hot. If you have more of a real process, you can cook that into the CRM to say, these are, this is how we're going to qualify a shipper, right? And this is the next step. This is the next step to actually progress the sale, prevent the, hey, just wanted to see if, you know, we can move forward now. Um, so I, I think that really helps. And then going to the team collaboration piece, it, CRM can really help you in a, a multitude of different ways because number one, you know, take somebody coming from outside the industry. I can go, it's almost a tribal knowledge base. You can look at it that way. I can go and look at the best sales reps that have been operating. I can go and look at the accounts that they have in the CRM take a look at what they've done, take a look at their notes. I can study their cadences. I can study their notes. And this is something that I I did just kind of on my own wanting to get better when I was in sales. Uh, and then also when I had joined brokerage, just to kind of understand, okay, what did it take? Because 
anybody that's made cold calls or has done a lot of outreach to shippers in particular, it, it requires so many different touch points. And so a lot of people go back and forth on how many calls do I need to make? How many emails? And then what's the, what's the time span in between each call, each email, voicemail, anything of that nature that, that needs to be had. And, you know, you want to build some kind of cadence, but it's always good to sort of study and say, okay, maybe I, maybe I shorten this cadence and do it a little bit more in spurts and more of a sprint. And then maybe I need to expand it out and and spread it out a little bit more over time. So that way you're not overly persistent and coming off as nagging to a, to a shipper and, you know, getting blocked. Um, so it's cool because you can study all that. And one of the biggest things I think when we talk to customers uh, and brokerages is a lot of times, you know, they're always just trying to understand what's, what's happened, what's going on with this shipper and CRM makes it an easy proactive way to just jump in, see the notes, know what the story is. And then especially for managers, you can proactively coach your team to help guide for next steps instead of, you know, pulling time away. And when, when the knowledge is already existing out there in the system, you don't have to ask for that. You could be a little bit more proactive in your approach and put more time back in your salespeople's days. Yeah, that's one of the things that there's a lot of tribal knowledge uh, around uh, freight brokerage floors, right? It's your customer. You have the relationship. You don't always have time to, to write down the, the notes or the, the willpower in, in, in a, a lot of cases. So it, it is difficult on that that front. So so whenever you decided, to, uh, when, when did you decide to, to, to kind of go in and, and start start your business, right? You're like, okay, I'm going to build a CRM. It was right after the one point logistics shutdown. Uh, so back in mm-hmm. 2020, uh, right after COVID started. So, you know, not the most, not the most ideal timing, but I'm kind of one of those people where timing may never ultimately be the greatest. And I think, you know, I'm a risk taker and somebody that's willing to, to try and put in the effort. And I take a lot of action and, you know, being in sales too, for me, I'm like, okay, cool. I'll go and you know, hit the ground running. I'll make the cold calls, all the cold emails. I'll do the marketing. I'll do everything that it takes to try to make it work. Um, our, our go-to-market strategy, and this is something I learned early on, and I read all the books. I listened to all the podcasts about niching down. I did not do that early on, and I really wish I did. Um, our, it's the biggest thing that I've learned, and I think when I talk to people about my entrepreneurial journey, uh, we made our pivot to freight brokerage and logistics just earlier this year, and it's been one of the best things. And for me, coming from the back from that background, I I know the language. I've cold called, I've closed shippers, I've coached really successful sales reps. So it made a lot more sense. But it is something I wish I did earlier on because just like just like if you're a freight broker and you're reaching out to shippers, there's an abundance of freight uh, shippers that are out there, right? And it's you know, and starting off, it makes a lot more sense to niche down. It makes your messaging and your positioning. Uh, much easier to scale when it comes to marketing or when it, even when it comes to sales outreach. So um, it did start back in 2020. It took a long time to sort of just develop the product. I, I outsourced to the development, um, but I've been working with my developers now and the same developers throughout the, throughout that whole time for the past three years. Um, and then really after my last experience over at Silo, is it took about after four months once I left there to get to the point where I said, okay, I need to just simplify this down. I need to go one industry. Logistics makes the most sense because I know that there's ways that we can help them get a lot more organized from, you know, either using spreadsheets or let's just say those that are using the limited CRM features that are in uh, the TMS that they're using, or for those that just are using a complex and very expensive CRM today. Yeah. And for anyone in sales or founding a business or doing anything niche down is is probably the most important thing because you can't attack the entire market at once. You, you got to take it piece by piece. And if you're a freight broker on the floor, uh, if you're trying to be all things, all people and you're not niche down yourself, uh, you're going to learn a valuable lesson as well, because it's, it's very difficult to, to learn all these different modes and be an expert at it and really be successful. You need to niche down uh, your, your, yourself. I mean, that's the one, one of the most important things uh, because you just can't take a bite out of the entire market. Number two on, on on what you just said, there's never a good time. There's never a perfect time to to, to start a business. There, there really isn't. Um, if you start a freight brokerage in 2021, uh, you, you might think it's the best time, but but you're just ramping up when the market's hot. And by the time you get your, your legs under you, uh, everything kind of clicking, the, the market's going to turn on you and you're going to go through that down market. And I, I think that the moral of that story is no matter what you do, you have to go through two or three cycles in the market 
uh, wh whether you're in freight or just the general economy, you have to weather those storms and rise to, uh, rise to those highs um, when, when things are good um, before you have a sustainable business. So it doesn't really matter when you start. It's, it's immaterial at the end of the day. It just feels like, oh, I should have started when when business was in economic conditions were a little bit better. Um, but then again, that, that doesn't really give, might give you a little bit of advantage on that first cycle. But you have to weather right. two or three of those cycles and you got to do that on your own. Yeah, and it's stuff that you should just be prepared for in advance because the cycles are inevitable. So. I think just trying to figure out, okay, what can you do to try to prevent the risk within those times, whether it's you got to focus on customer retainment or if you just got to figure out other other strategies that you can to acquire a new business. Um, I, it does, I don't think it really matters what business you're in. Those times are, those times are always going to arise. They are. They are. And um, when we talk about you know specialties and niches within freight and, and logistics, the qualification process is a, a little bit different than other other businesses, right, um, or other industries, those qualifications, shipments per week, and, and the, you know, we, we have our lingo, right, and uh, we qualify people on our lingo. So it is important to have uh, tools out there that speak our lingo, right? That, that, that Absolutely. Kind of fit right in there. Yeah, and, and it's really not that difficult to also get that built into the system. And I think a really good way to start is – you can look at it from two different aspects. You can really start on your operation side and say, okay, what are the things with the current carrier network that we have that we service best? And what also may be our most profitable freight? And then bring that over to the sales side to say, let's go find more of that. And then another way, you know, just from a general sales process is to work with your best sales team members. What is their process, right? From start to finish, what's the most ideal situation for you to actually move from start to finish? And it's not that you're going to be able to do that every single time because there are going to be the times where you call a shipper and they're, you know, saying, all right, go ahead and send over your paperwork before you've even gone through some information. But still, like, what, what, is, is, what exactly is going to help more so fully bake a deal based on your ideal shipper profile? And you can add those into the system. And it, it, it's not built to exactly, again, be more of a, a call script, but it's just more of a guideline to say these are the most important things that we want to know when it comes to profiling and qualifying shippers that make the most sense. So that way, even if you have a brand new college student or college, you know, like college class that's coming in fresh into brokerage, never even been in, you know, uh, into another career, never even used CRM potentially, they could be a little bit more guided in their sales process to say, okay, if I'm doing outreach, these are going to be the, the things that I need to be curious about and to be asking the shippers. And then on the back end, it makes it much easier to report on those and to continue to refine and build on your ICP from there. When we talk about when we go up a level, maybe sales management ownership, uh, the, the the reporting type of the, or the reporting side of the equation. What are some of the things that you find sales managers and leaders don't really utilize CRMs to their best advantage, right? And, and that comes from analysis. It comes from maybe uh, inputs from the, the team and, and training. What, what do you see uh, that, that could be done better? Really just customize, or customizing the reporting in their dashboards. So the, I think the easiest thing that you can do and is the, the, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in the phrase, what gets measured gets managed. I talk about this on my content online all the time. And I, I don't think it's a really healthy habit to find a metric, talk about it one time in a month or talk about it once a quarter, run a bunch of reports on it, talk with your team, go through a sprint and then build around it. Right. It, it's really important to align for your sales organization. What are the most what are the most important KPIs and metrics that are going to help drive more shipper sales for new relationships or even just the existing business that you have? And the easiest thing for sales managers is those specific metrics. You want them on your dashboard to be able to view at a, at a macro level in a very quick time period, you know, at the beginning and end of your day. So whether it's for, you know, the daily metrics or the weekly metrics, monthly, quarterly, whatever it may be, you know, you want those on your dashboard to help drive the right behaviors from your sales reps and then also spread what those best practices are all across your organization. So what I have often found, whether it's from the organizations that I've, I've been at um, or just, you know, observing other sales managers or even with the brokerages that we talked to today and, you know, even some of our current customers that now use Sales Dash, 
um, is really just building out your dashboard to make it very simple and to say, what are those things that are important for you? So, you know, a lot of it is going to be, again, to help drive better behaviors out of the salespeople. Make, how can you try to make them more persistent and stay in front of the shippers, right? So maybe a simple report that says, hey, let's like, keep it on the salespeople's dashboard for all the shippers that haven't been contacted in 14 days or, or 30 days. Um, you know, you want to keep track of pipeline generation if that's something that's important for your most qualified opportunities to help segment, you know, if you've got 100 to 150 accounts and shippers in each specific salesperson's name, what are the five to 10 that are the most qualified ones that you really care about that, you know, may actually move a shipment for the first time this month or next month, right? And then from there, you guys can all strategize together in terms of what you need to do to get that across the line to try to work to get that first shipment in. Um, those are the right conversations that you want to try to drive. But to me, it always starts with the, the dashboard visibility, right? What are you actually what are you actually measuring? And are you just taking what comes out of the box for the other CRMs? Because uh, if you are, again, that's not really customized for freight and it's not for the typical sales process behaviors, metrics that do help drive shipper sales. Um, just the, the smallest tweaks to your dashboard can really make a big difference when it comes to actually driving better behaviors to get better results. You're right about that, you know, that, that dashboard, that, that easy access to, to come in and, and look at the data and see what's happening, what's not happening, what needs to happen, uh, and, and keeping an eagle eye on that if, if you're in management is, is very important. I think on the flip side, too, you know, in a sales rep role, if if I, 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 I the best way to word this, I, I guess, is if if you're in if you don't need a CRM to to um, or any kind of organization, let, let's say to to manage your pipeline, it, it's way too small. It, it's not nearly as robust as you need to be successful because um, when, once you start building the pipeline, uh, you, you're going to get disorganized. You're, you you can't keep it all up yeah. your in, in your head, and it's a good feeling, right? And when you're like I. I, I need to get a look this up because I can't remember when I talked to this person or who that person even was. But uh, that, that just means you have a robust pipeline. You have a lot of things going on, which hopefully means you have a lot of freight moving. Absolutely. And I mean, you just got to think about everything else that you're doing on a day in and day out basis. But there's a lot of brokerages, at least historically, that always wanted, you know, 75 plus dials, 100, 125. And I think every organization and I've been seeing it's been cool to see a lot of conversation online recently around some of those traditional methods to just absolutely pound the phone versus more strategic research based uh, prospecting methods that I, I've seen a lot more conversation around, you know, going against some of those traditional ones. But yeah, even if to me, if you're making over 20 activities a day, right, or even 30 outreaches in a day, you're, you're talking about over 100 in a week. And over the course of a month, that's over 300, 400 at an extreme minimum. And to just remember all those little details, because a lot of times in freight, it is the little details that go a long way that help you actually develop that relationship over time. And you don't want to create a poor customer experience where you don't have that information captured from, even if it's a one to two minute call, because even in a two minute call, if you're rapid fire with your questions and strategic about it, you can capture some really insightful information just even in that small time period. Um, but if you don't have that, you're asking the same questions. Well, that, that like, just put yourself on the other end. If you're the buyer consumer, or let's just say, you know, in this case, you're the shipper, um, you're then talking to somebody that is actually not really detail oriented. And I always say like, if your doctor did that, right. And just treat it as almost like if you're a doctor and, and, and going through a lot of those practices and taking notes and asking the right questions, you want to make sure that that's documented so you can build on that information to actually work towards that shipment. That's efficiency. That's professionalism within sales. That's actually progressing the sale. But if you're asking the same questions, you can create a frustrating customer experience where they're going to think, okay, I may not trust this person with my freight because they're, they're not, they're not really listening to what I'm saying and they're not building on that information from there. What's your style, especially in a market like this, uh, that, that is pretty soft. Is it a hundred phone calls a day, uh, rapid fire, or is it 20, 25, do a little bit of research? I mean, what's your style? Yeah. I, so here's the thing with like, when it comes to sales, I mean, you put math behind it and um, especially at OPL when I was there, you know, the, the one thing you want to try to do is it, it shouldn't, I, I find that a lot of organizations will say, Hey, it's going to be 50 calls or a hundred calls. I tend to lean a lot more on the personalization more than anything else, because at the end of the day in freight, you know, one relationship can change everything for you. And so if you can get very deep, I think that's really important. 
Um, so I'm, I'm lean much bigger on the quality, but at the same time, if you're not getting pickups and you know, if you're just getting a ton of voicemails, well then of course your call volume is going to be higher, but that's this, that to me, that's also the same thing where 125 calls doesn't matter because that's going to tell me that your talk time is low. You probably asked bad questions. You were just talking about yourself. You weren't listening. And so, you know, as much as you can, like if you could get 10 really quality calls a day, that would be fantastic. Right. But it's hard to live in that world because of how competitive it is, it is in freight. So I always lean more on the personalization, you know, trying to get drive up a little bit more talk time if you can on the phones, because to me, that's always going to indicate your behaviors of asking open ended questions, curiosity, getting the shipper to actually open up about their information. You going through discovery and qualifying um, is always better. So the, I, I typically always lean more towards that. But I do think instead of just saying, hey, across the org, this is what's expected. You should also look at it from a sales reps aspect because there are going to be some sales reps that just have larger books and maybe a little bit more tied into operations or they just don't have time to make as many calls. Or let's just say they're just better on the phones, right? Like they can get better connects. They're, they're, mm-hmm. they're better when it comes to their actual uh, open-ended questioning and you know in the beginning of calls and all that stuff to where they don't need to do that. And they can be a little bit more hands-on with their customers. So it should be, I think, a good healthy balance. But for the newer reps, that, that goal should always be higher because they're going to learn faster from more activity. But you should always be reassessing that activity at the end of each day and at the end of each week because of how much you're going to have to say, okay, what worked well, what didn't work well. And one of the easiest things you can do is, okay, if there's a question that worked where the shipper just really opened up on the phone, document that question and ask that question to the other ones and then just keep building on that list little by little from there. Yeah, I, I think the, I think it, it, it's a seesaw. It goes back and forth between you know quantity because it's a numbers game. Though there's so many shippers out there, there's so many freight brokers out there. You, you just you got to call a lot of people to to get any results. So on that side of the equation, then the quality. Um, but there's a hybrid in there, right? You want to get, make as many quality calls as possible. And what is that? And I, I think it goes back to talk time. But in a lot of ways, uh, you, you said it before, Josh, is you can only manage what you can measure. And it's difficult to manage talk time um, on the phone. I, I know that is. there's analytics out there that, that can do that. Um, but but it's, it's one of those interesting balances, right? It's not the 125 mm-hmm. calls. It's, it's not the 10 calls. It's somewhere in the middle there where... Maybe it's 40 quality calls. Maybe it's 30 quality calls. Whatever it is, if you can max that out, you're going to max out your talk time. And good things will happen. Yeah, absolutely. And some of the phone systems, you know, the next Divas of the world and, and the other ones that are out there, if you're using one of those phone systems, they, they can track talk time. But just even sometimes monitoring your connects. You know, one of the things that you can do if you're a sales manager, let's just say, is if you're tracking results for activities in your CRM, I, I personally do this myself for, you know, like meeting shows and meeting no shows for demos um, or even just my connects. But, you know, for us, like in sales dash, for, you could track all your made contacts and then have that on your dashboard to say, OK, here's everybody that we talked to yesterday or today. And as a sales manager, you can review those notes just from one report and it lives on your dashboard. and It's very easy to access and review. Um, And then that also allows you to, again, more proactively coach to go through and say, hey, maybe this sales rep across the office or, you know, in another office has gone through a similar situation. And as the manager, typically, you're going to hold a lot more of that knowledge that others are doing to be able to help your team. So I think it can be very impactful. But, um, yeah, you know, being able to track that stuff definitely goes a long way in terms of the actual quality that you're having uh, within your shipper prospecting. It does. It does. And Josh, thanks for uh, dropping by, put that coffee down today. Uh, it's been a pleasure as always. How does our audience reach out and learn more about Sales Dash and, and yourself? Yeah, so you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, name is Josh Lyles. Feel free to reach out, shoot a connect, uh, reach out over DM. And then our website is sales-crm.com. You can go on there, uh, check out any of our different features that we have. You can schedule a demo. I'll be the one that hosts the demo, so I'll be able to talk with you. Um, and you can also try it for free for free, free for 14 days. And if you do that, I'll be sure to reach out and just check in and see what your needs may be. Um, but LinkedIn or, or just our website are always one of the easiest ways. You bet. Thanks again. Thanks again, Josh. Thanks, Kevin. Great Thanks. to see you. Talk to you soon. And that was Josh Lyles. He's the founder over at Sales Dash CRM. You can go check them out. He just explained how. 
And um, on the audio side, we have a few audio episodes out. Dr. Mark Monera over at Supply Chain Fitness and Jeff Booth at Open Doc talking about the headache of scheduling. And a few more coming out. So you can like, subscribe wherever you download your, your podcast and you can catch us here every week. But until next time, let's put that copy down. I got friends only wanna talk business. I got expensive, cause when is expensive. I got expensive, cause when is expensive. I've been reading all the work. And I've been shutting down the stars.